All right, let's just go ahead and continue with this new page of the arabesque. And, um, well, we come into this right hand whole note, major third. Right, so I'm going to hold it with the five and the three, like that. Now you'll notice that I highlighted the yellow at the end of the measure, which could be played by the right hand as well. But I think it's easier if we just work on playing those notes with the left hand. And I'll show you how this is done. So with the initial two notes in the right hand, in the left hand, uh, you have to instantly jump. Right, so that kind of little squiggle, the red line and the rectangle, that's really showing you to prepare these notes right here. Right, and so that's kind of like a chord shape. Right, kind of, uh, F sharp minor seventh chord, but uh, then that pattern actually continues. So C sharp E F sharp A, and then C sharp E F sharp A. Right, goes into the upper staff, the right hand staff, but the notes are the same. So it does make sense to just continue to pretty much do this. And then you naturally come down, bend the thumb underneath perhaps to find the E, D, E, and then we have to jump. Now on this jumping note right here, it's possible to use finger one. Again, it's perhaps somewhat unusual to use finger one on a black key, but for such a big leap, it can actually help. So curve the thumb right underneath and then you hit the C sharp with the line and you do boom. Okay. So you're back on that F sharp F sharp octave and it's the exact same repeat of this measure. So both of them are the same. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, huh. Check, first stop and check on this position shift. So another jumping note right here with a rectangle. We want to be very clear about it. All right, so first position jump, second position jump. So of course, we need to completely get rid of those editorial fingerings so they don't confuse us. Perfectly whited out. Same thing there, no fingers four and two, three and five, just like before. Okay, I think this is pretty much done. Just make sure to practice those jumps. Take your time on the slow moving quarter note measure. There, every quarter note has three triplet eighths in it, so. Here, of course, you have to release that A. It's, it's held by the th uh, third finger at first, but it's really the pedal that's doing the holding of that sound. So let go. And then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Two, three, one. So if you happen to have a slow practice tempo for those triplets, don't speed through the quarter notes. Okay, let's go on to the next line, see what's going on. So, yeah, uh, you come into this downbeat like this, and then the fast moving pattern in the right hand just takes us all the way to the top. So it's a right hand sequence. Or some music the theorists like to call it planing. So I would strongly recommend blocking this out so that the right hand has absolutely no questions about 
these chordal shapes. Right, so just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And one way to practice these shapes is to literally start with just single fifth finger. All you're playing is an E major scale. If you need to review it, since it's an appropriate scale to know for this particular piece. Just making sure to know that it's all the black keys except for the A sharp, so that can help. So A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp. And then we get out of that planing motion. Uh, then I would add the other outside note. So A, also C sharp, B, also D sharp, C sharp, E, D sharp, F sharp, E, G sharp, F sharp, G, A, G sharp, B, A, C sharp, B, D sharp, C sharp, E, D sharp, A, F sharp. Okay, so now we've added out of those four notes, two notes. We, we now have a kind of a 1-5 bracket in our right hand. Then you can start filling in with that third finger. Right? And it's easy because 5 3 naturally forms an interval of a third, so you just. and so on. Finally, add the second finger. I would pronounce those notes because it's amazing how the brain can help itself learn things if you just speak it out loud. E, F, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Right, so the, the idea is to really, really study these patterns until they they're both mentally secure, you, you, you're just following this E major scale up, 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 up in each finger individually, or the, the second finger, or the third, or the fifth finger. So that, that feeling of the hand and the knowledge of the E major pa uh, scale shape and sound, I think all of this will come together to give you and this should really be done even if you're using the score to play this piece essentially from memory, from just the understanding of the direction of this passage. Okay, so once your right hand has been practiced and you can ha have that feeling of solid transitions uh, between chord shapes, uh, the left hand is relatively simple. A um, couple of different fingering options possible, of course, but um, yeah, I don't. Let's just go with what's written on this page. So, therefore, this, right? So, but of course, it's not just the third finger. It's, as you can see, I'm shaping a pretty <laughs> strange. Uh, C star like shape in my left hand, which you know I'm trying to grab the f the fifth finger, uh, or rather rather I'm trying to grab the B note with the fifth finger, and still have my third finger on F sharp or at least as close as possible. And to achieve this, I'm actually using this technique of not keeping my palm flat like this which makes this stretch really hard, but kind of rotate it slightly, and you can see it really well on my left-hand side, side view camera, right? So instead of this, it just rotates down, and so I'm playing my fifth finger kind of on the side, but that's okay. really takes me all the way through to the end of the second measure, that positioning. Now, of course, on that B, boom, 
we need to do one of those rapid position shifts. This is actually written as a staccato note in the in the left hand, so that helps. Right. Ooh. But not too loud, otherwise it kind of sticks out. Yeah, don't do that. It does crescendo a little bit, I just wouldn't overdo the left hand. you want to stop with that very obvious uh, position jump just stop and check you found the new position in the left hand then you can continue now here another jumping note back down really far down further down than this rectangle shows Right, so that's what you want to practice. Just freeze, check that you found the E E, and then yeah, um, the rest is pretty straightforward. Uh, again, a couple of different fingering options. Let me shift my view. There it is. Yeah, uh, let's see. Is there anything special about this? So, firstly, I would not bother to change from 4 to a 5. Just hold it, and then... Now here... I would change to a 5. I'm not actually sure why in this edition you have one change to a 4, and then you have a 5 on the downbeat where the key signature changes? I'm not sure. Five, and then... Right, so that's a tie. You don't re-strike that downbeat E. At least I, I don't remember hearing people perform it, and I'm not aware of some hidden Debussy autograph of this score where you don't have that tie. Maybe somebody can correct me in the comments if you are aware of such a, an original by Debussy which has been changed in this edition. Anyway, so uh, yeah, that's the, the right hand. Uh, we'll get into the uh, A major key signature a little bit in a few moments, but in the, r in the left hand, I, I would just suggest that that's what you do right so this here is a jump to a four note chord and that shape once you find it right you just play those four notes in the in the left hand and since you were playing what Five, three, two, one. Um, so yeah, same thing. Three, two, like that. Okay, so the left hand practice that jump, and then maybe this jump as well. Although here it's not as crucial because you can kind of lazily, you know, go over the thumb and and find those remaining couple of notes in that left hand rise. But I just I think jumping is a really important skill to master. Because if you can do it, it really solves so many problems for a large number of pieces, especially from this sort of era, the kind of late romanticism and lots of arpeggios in the left hand or the right hand. In any case, uh, let's uh, just mark it as a jumping note. Okay, so we, we get through this all makes sense. We're holding those really, really, really long notes. Two, three, four. Now here on that E, same thing, a number of fingers are possible, but let's see what's going to happen. I think the fourth finger on the downbeat of the key change measure is a good idea. 
because of having to hold that F sharp in the... So we're really having this four-part counterpoint, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, uh, starting in this A major tempo rubato section of the arabesque. And it also says, un peu moins vite. I think that means a little bit faster, even though it's tempo rubato, it just kind of has that sense of forward motion uh, as compared to the more relaxed uh, first section. So, so we're playing the bass line, B, C sharp, D, while holding the tenor line, F sharp. And then here, of course, you will be using the pedal. You can kind of see uh, that green in, my, in the bottom of my screen. But I would definitely clear it for that second beat. So, for instance, you're holding it, then you will clear it. And then, of course, clear it here as well. So every time there's a significant harmonic change, the ear will tell you, yeah, you need to come up and down on that pedal. No surprises there. But a little blur in during the beat is absolutely fine. Now, I'm not supposed to play that uh, E, of course. So I'll hold it down in the right hand. Let's just look at the right hand on its own. We've got the alto playing the A, there it is. And then the soprano goes D, E, C sharp. Now here, my suggestion is to play a fourth finger, just so we have an easier time negotiating the various position shifts that are coming up. Yeah. Is there a different way to finger that G sharp? I guess, but it still gets clunky. So I would suggest the alto voice A, finger one, G sharp finger one, just continue doing that. Forget about that fourth finger in the editor's uh, notation. So here, uh, sorry, that would be three, of course, but here five again, right, on that last note. Mm -hmm. and kind of squeezing in the fifth finger to play that C sharp. And then coming down on the four and two. I think that's a pretty nifty idea. Okay, so one other thing you might have noticed. If I start like this, so I'm holding the E, and so key change. Right, right here, I have to play that thumb on the G sharp, so my whole arm has to move in. Therefore, that's one of those spots I would highly recommend to put a reminder to slide the hand right inside the keyboard, right? So I'm holding that long E, I've got plenty of time to do that. And then finally A, played right there, not right here, just next to the black key. Here, at the very end of this measure, look at my crazy position. Ho holding the G-sharp, now I don't have to hold it, I could let go, but either way, that has to happen. Yeah, I have to bring the fourth and second or second and fourth fingers over to these two notes that you see on the next line. So um, that, to me, that's one of those spots where some kind of reminder is useful. If you can let go like that, that's absolutely fine. And make sure to have that E uh, position change for the thumb if you want. But the important thing is to stop and make sure that whatever you're supposed to change in the, ha in the positioning, you're doing that. Okay, so... The pedal and even here I'm holding the pedal down I can let go of the A in the right hand put it on G sharp right somewhere around 
here perhaps. Put it there first and continue. And this. So don't continue before you do this. One more time. Ah, see, I've got plenty of time. And here's a perfect opportunity to prepare my hands. Right, stop to check, and then we continue to the next line. So little things like that, remember, they always make a big difference when you are finally performing. If you do a lot of these advanced preparation um, steps ahead of time, it really, really helps to not feel uh, that you are under a lot of strain when you're performing. So the E is being held, I'm inside the keys on the right hand. I'm inside the keys naturally in the left hand because, of course, I have to play the first finger on F sharp, which <laughs> look where it puts my fourth finger, and that's fine. Okay, so pedal has retaken this harmony, reset. And then pause to make sure you're doing this, or maybe even this. And I would suggest this, or maybe even this. Let me think. Yeah, let's do this, one and two. So what I'm actually going to do is put one and two right here because that's an even better reminder of preparing a very specific shape right here. So right, I'm just going to stop and I know that once I go, uh, you know, Anatoly, continue, I can definitely play this next line's measure just fine. Boom. Okay. That's a very simple measure, thankfully. So I'm not going to talk much about it, except to say that, of course, we have a huge, huge jump coming up in the, or we have to do a huge, huge jump in the left hand. Therefore, that. In fact, I would do the same kind of preparation in the right hand. So. You taking advantage of the fact that we don't have any triplets or even eighth notes. Um, we have these long, long, long chords that we have to sound out with a pedal. It's a perfect opportunity to schedule your uh, position shifts. All right, so I'm retaking that chord on beat three, boom. super super fast jump here right in that one you can easily first move the left hand and then move the right hand for some reason for me I find it's mentally less straining to just practice the, the move in both hands like a single thing that I have to do That, that just it's something you learn to do and once you've learned it it kind of happens automatically All right, so in that particular case you are not jumping the left hand staccato style you could but I'm saying you know I'm, I'm not going to in, if I were to learn this piece instead I wait until the right hands E play that staccato style, sort of sideways staccato style, and that's when I also move the uh, left hand. Okay. Freeze, check that position. You'll notice the hairpins, suggesting you really want to bring out that chord with that top F sharp, so F sharp, E, and F sharp, and then E, and that hairpin down. Again, same idea. You have to move from these two notes, therefore, that. A little sloppy with my rectangles, but you get the point. Um, also, just, just to be extra clear, I, I do play this with a two and this with a two. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, well, it could be that, one, five, two, one, 
In this case, Debussy doesn't want it to be too loud, right? Instead, a little gentler, just two notes in the left hand. And then when you move, right? Big three note chord. Same thing, you shape the three notes, five, two, one, with the octave stretch, but then just play five and two. But the motions are the same. It's a kind of, it's a rhyming uh, pair of measures. So it's the same idea, but using different harmonies. So jumping down from that E, finding the position, uh, yeah, definitely, let me think about this, yeah, definitely a four, just like here. Mm -hmm. So that's of course a five, I should have put it in. And that first jump, first hairpin, downward jump I just freeze freeze and check now about to jump and freeze and check with that sforzando it's actually an indication by Debussy that yes first time louder on that F sharp but this time on G sharp even louder 5-5 five, five, while pedaling. Now we come back to essentially the beginning. Right, so in this measure we are replicating, at least in the beginning, what we had up here. Okay, so same fingerings of course, but let's make sure to prepare the position way ahead of time. So we don't want to kind of play something like this and then oh, oh, oh I have to be here. No, just just move move right here. In the in the right hand you don't need to move because the thumb is already anchored on A natural and that's the same note that you need in this cyan colored uh, measure and of course if you accepted my fingering suggestions in this top measure just make sure to transfer them here so I would not you know that fourth finger just does not make sense so whitening it out okay so what do we have Yeah, if you can kind of see, the chord is almost the same. I'll, I'll kind of highlight it with orange here. It's almost the same except instead of F sharp A, it's E A in, in the right hand, as you can see. Uh, but in the left hand, definitely the same idea. Well, I didn't finger it actually. I didn't finger it at the top, even though I played it. So here it is. It's that, and of course, I'll just use the same fingering right here. All right, uh, switch my view a bit. There it is. Cool. So we are playing the bottom line. Stretched, stretch out my fingers to one four here. Like that. So what happens is trying to figure out if there's an alternative fingering for the right hand as well. Probably not. Five, four, two. 
maybe what I would do is switch to four here. Seems like it makes sense. It's the same key twice. You know, this whole three, four thing that pianists uh, used to like to do and then still do. I, I'm not a big fan of that myself. seemingly helping you to shape this line a little better. F, F, G, F. Well, you can do it with the same finger. F, F, G, F, right? Anyway, um, where am I? So two here, one, and then four, four, five, four, and so on. Okay, so let's see. Are there any other pitfalls? Yeah, so when I do this, I already have finger two on F sharp, so that's a great pivot uh, reference point. I can kind of rotate around it, if you like, deviate around it, whatever the technical term, and prepare one and four on these two notes. Now, at some point you want to let go of the F sharp, but at first it sort of serves as that little pivot. And I find one and four, so uh, right around here, perhaps. And that really puts my five and two in position to play A and, A, A and D sharp. All right, so essentially what you want to do is to let two naturally move from F sharp to D sharp, the next black key down. That's, that would be an important thing. This new harmony resolve into that D sharp on B3 really needs time to sound out. So you're really changing the pedal every beat on this one. I really think you should do two right here. Then in this next measure, into which you can see you crescendo in the top voice, which means you don't really do much in the in the lower voice. Now what am I doing? Right, the, the left hand is really supportive. It's not getting in the way of the right hand. Now, what fingering should I use on this left hand? I guess I could do... I really don't know, you know? Part of me wants to do something crazy. One, two there or something, so it's easier to find that octave BB. But honestly, it doesn't matter. Whatever fingering you choose is going to work. You're just going to have to shift positions. So one four is fine, one five is fine, but maybe one thing that you can try, because it's a very, very long note, the half note, you could put like a second finger like that. So it's pedaled. Let, let me just go ahead and get there. Oh, by the way, of course here. Oh yeah, the, old, the editor's fingers are, are fine. Except, hold on. a pretty clever fingering solution which is fo four followed by five two three five five the only trouble with this of course is it's pretty tr tricky to do this fa four five two yeah i like it though anyway i'll put 
put it as, a, as an idea that five is a pretty cool solution because then what you end up doing is three here one there all right so the, the whole hand kind of slides down like this something but more importantly as our right hand starts to descend down past the midpoint of the keyboard look again at my nose if you can kind of see it right i'm shifting over my left hip so that my torso is i mean it's vertical right but main weight is over the left leg and that allows me to be centered right around here rather than this this uh, e f divide so right around here and that makes that four going to a five two three possible whereas if you stay here there's just too much kind of elbow uh, angle uh, this angle for the elbow becomes a little bit unmanageable right shifting over right here oh, and now more importantly this half note uh, as I suggested put so let go of the E that E is just long enough to kind of be caught by uh, bad color be caught by that pedal here but then instantly you go to like two right here and that sort of naturally puts us in position to find the B B right? because remember even earlier we were talking about these open fifth chord positions uh, and you know, it's five one but two in between same thing here two in between five one so that that's why I think that's a good idea put two here and just naturally let your left hand fall into place okay so okay a three there on that E natural okay so like this like this let's see what's over the horizon oh yeah we got that That's, that's coming up we're not there yet uh, but that means do we have to do any position shifting yes so even further down on the right hand so hold on let, let me do that Maybe not quite as far down something like that and then in the right in the left hand that little square sorry there, there it is um, so we change the pedal here, so we're holding it down. And just parking our hands in place, making sure we're ready to go. And um, yeah, we'll do the next page next time. Uh, hopefully, I've answered some questions on this page. If not, please, of course, leave me any comments. I'll be happy to get to them. And in the meanwhile, uh, happy practicing.